Live from the chicken wing capital of the world, <laughs> Buffalo, New York. You're listening to the Child Care Bridge Podcast, your source for the best tips, tools, and tactics on how to market and grow your child care center, ensuring total domination. Total domination. This is the Child Care Bridge, and this is your host, Michael Tasner. Hey there, and welcome to this week's episode of the Child Care Bridge. Today's topic is the final lesson in session on capitalizing on fall enrollment. So at the time of this recording, it is late August. And for a lot of you, this is the busiest time of the year. And I've been giving you different tactics and tools over the last couple of weeks to really make sure that you capitalize on this short window. Now, the good news is that not everyone makes their decisions over the next couple of weeks. A lot of families will actually wait and so, Michael, why would they wait if it's back to school and they're sending some of their other kids back to school? Well, there's a lot of reasons why parents decide not to send their son or daughter right away to pre-K, or even if it's an infant, they're going back to work. They're trying to figure everything out. So don't give up if you didn't have the most amazing fall enrollment season. With that being said, I wanted to focus today's conversation around what do you do with all the people like that? What do you do with all of the be-backs, as I like to call them? So the people that take a tour, potentially, they say, oh, we're, we're going to be back and we'll get back to you in the next couple of days or the next week or the next month. Like, what do you do with all those people? Now, when I have analyzed low-hanging fruit or missed opportunities. You can look at it either way. It's either some low-hanging fruit that you can capitalize on or the other set is completely missed opportunities. The most low-hanging fruit that I see are people that have raised their hand. Now, the downside to everything that's going on right now is that you may have overlooked some families. Your team very well may have dropped the ball on follow-up. If you were saying, well, oh, Michael, just tell it to me straight and really be direct, I can promise you that either you and or your team have dropped the ball on lead follow-up. A lot of these families, the majority of them, are going to get moved into that category of lost opportunities. That's the whole reason to making sure that you are so on top of everything during this critical time period that you don't miss any of those. The chances are very high that at least 70% of those families have already moved on right now. Hang on to that phrase, right now, to a different center. Now you can take one of two approaches. Approach number one is you say, we missed them, they're gone, we're never gonna get them back. Or B, you can play the long game. I want you to take option B. In being able to see the ebbs and flows of this industry, the ups, downs, and being able to see the seasonality of, okay, great, so now we've got fall enrollment, and then things start to come down a little bit, November, December, and then it picks back up in January, then it goes down, up, down, then you hit summer camp, then you have the drop-off for summer again. All those ebbs and flows. What I can tell you is that families, parents, they're always making different types of decisions at all different times. Now, what I promised you was that your team has dropped the ball on follow-up. But what I can also promise you is that a lot of those people are not going to be happy with the center that they chose. Now, that's not to say that you have the best education, the best center, period. I hope that you do. But attrition can be pretty high and it normally is high the first couple of months. So a family, well, I thought that it was only gonna be a 10 minute drive, but with traffic, like we're driving 30 minutes to this location, I think we made a bad decision. Or they don't jive with the teacher. One of the directors that they met decides to leave and go somewhere else. Something happens the first week. Parents are already on edge with 
the fact that they are sending their child somewhere else. So they're already skeptical and they're always looking for, is there a little mishap? Is there something that, well, we made the wrong decision. We better solve this one that like puts them over the edge. So where you are going to really make sure that you capitalize on your fall enrollment is to make sure that you take all of those people that have raised their hand and you are going to nurture them till the end of time, period. But so how long? Until the end of time. I do not want you to stop nurturing these leads. Now, over the next one to two weeks, I want you to be as aggressive as you possibly can be. I want you to call, email, text, call, email, text, text again. I want you to put some things in the mail. I want you to be very aggressive to you basically get an answer from them. Are they enrolling in your center, yes or no? If the answer is no, did they enroll somewhere else, yes or no? So you wanna get that out of the way. Now let's just use some simple math and say you're working with 100 potential opportunities. 70, 80 plus of those already have enrolled somewhere else. So you've got then anywhere between 20 and 30 that might still be on the fence. So I want you to try and work those right now, but the only way you're gonna find those is to work the entire list. Now you can quickly send a text message. Are you still looking for care for little Johnny, yes or no? Did you already find care, yes or no? You can play with the verbiage a little bit, but at this stage of the game, I'm looking for definitive yes or no. I don't wanna live in the land of maybe. Are you still looking for care, yes or no? And then you can segment. Now put those people that already said, I'm not looking for care, I'm enrolled somewhere else. You put them on one sheet. The sheet of people that either don't respond quickly or they say, yeah, I'm still looking for care. I haven't figured it out. Those are the ones the next one to two weeks you need to work hard. You need to see if they wanna come back in for another tour. Can we get you some videos, some pictures? I want you to put a handwritten letter in the mail to them. I want the director and or the owner and or a teacher to do a short little 30 second video. For example, hey, this is Michael. I'm the director over at ABC Child Care. I just wanted to again say thank you ever so much for considering us as an option for care for little Johnny. We would be thrilled to have you. We only have, I believe, one, possibly two slots left. So if you're interested, please shoot me a call, a text or an email. We would love to have you for this upcoming season. Something like that. So short, sweet, to the point but it needs to be personalized. Don't just produce one, like these aren't challenging videos to do. Do more than one, do one for all those families. And you just sit down and next, 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 next. Can you use AI 100%? Can you use one generic video 100%? So if you can't get these little short videos, 30 second videos done, because you're telling me that there are hundreds and hundreds that you need to do, that's a different story but the chances are high that you don't have hundreds of people that have said they're still looking for care and that you need to get these videos out to immediately. So work those people to see how many of those you can bring over the fence. So that is the first step. Now, after that is complete, then you are going to have that list of people you're going to nurture. Now, you're gonna have a fall enrollment list of people that raised their hand for fall enrollment, but you're also gonna have some people probably from two, three, four, five, six months ago that if I were to call you out and put you on the spot and say, are you effectively following up with every single person that has raised their hand, yes or no, you're probably going to tell me no. So I want you to put together a simple campaign where you can send at least two emails every single month to this list. Now, what I want you to do is to then expand it a little bit and say, okay, we're gonna send two emails, so every other week for perpetuity, but I also wanna follow up with them a couple of other ways. So maybe once a month or every other month, you're gonna use a text campaign. And you've gotta keep in mind when you're using text and you're working people that they already said they went somewhere else, so you've already got that out of them through text, you want to look at and be really creative with what you're going to send. So it shouldn't be a, are you looking to change centers? Yes or no. It should be something of value. 
I thought of you. We have Halloween coming up. I wanted to give you a list of all of the free places that you can go and have little Johnny trick or treat. Here's a link. You want to give something that's fun. It's keeping your brand top of mind and it probably is going to link to a PDF that has your logo on it, your brand, something like that. You want to be able to stay in touch with those families. Now that can continue to be followed up with through those emails every other week. And if I had my way, at least every other month, six times a year, you'd be sending something physical in the mail. It can be as simple as a postcard. It can be a calendar. But what I, I don't want it to be something that is like one of those just generic tchotchkes that everyone sends you, like the insurance agents that send out, here's your calendar for the next year. And like, they're just so boring, like a magnet for your fridge. I don't want that kind of stuff. I want something that's a little bit different, but it doesn't have to be expensive. You could literally get in the habit of sending out every month all the fun holidays or all the, the top 10 fun things to do this month in your area. But what you're doing is you're staying top of mind. And what do you think is going to happen if, number one, that family says, yeah, we're not really loving our care here. What center do you think they're going to think about first? They're going to think about the center that has continued to follow up, continue to stay top of mind, continue to provide value. Now, if they never switch, I have all the data in the world that will actually show you that even if they don't switch to your center, they will actually end up referring your center. They might say, well, we go to ABC Academy. We were highly considering XYZ Institute as well. So you want to check them out as well. They send me a lot of cool things. They will actually mention your name, even if they decided not to enroll, just because of that law of reciprocity, but you continue to build up goodwill. If you play the long game, that list that you're going to continue to nurture will continue to drive new enrollments, new enrollments, new referrals, new relationships. But the key is you have to be consistent. You can't start off by sending everything once a week and then a couple weeks later, oh shoot, I forgot for three weeks. And then it goes to every other month. Oh, I got busy. If you're going to commit to this strategy, the number one most needed strategy tactic with this is the consistency. It's gotta be consistent like clockwork. Emails every other week, text messages once a month or every other month, something physical in the mail once a month and or every other month. Now think about all the different things that you can send in the mail. It's very easy to send an email. There's low cost, no cost, one and done. But you're not going to be nurturing 10,000 people. Maybe you're nurturing 100 families. Well, what if it costs you $3, $4 to send something? Or $1.50? Like, it, this is not overly expensive to do, but it's putting you in a different league than everyone else. So rather than giving you another strategy that has to do with getting lots and lots more leads for this fourth session on fall enrollments, I wanted to instill in you you need to focus on the people that are in front of you that you have not done as good of a job as you can with the follow-up. Follow up with them, segment your lists, and then figure out what quote-unquote meat is left on the bone. What families can you convert now that are still on the fence? And then continue to work and nurture your list of families from the last couple of months with email, text, even ringless voicemail, and if I had my way, putting some physical things in the mail for you as well. So it's just one of those things where and you can have a company do this. They will literally put everything in the mail for you. There's dozens of companies. I will link some below to best help you. I hope you've enjoyed the last three and now four episodes on dominating fall enrollment. And I hope you've had an amazing fall enrollment to set yourself up for a great remainder of the year and into next year. Michael Tazer signing off. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. I'll see you next week.